Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over some of my favorite designer fragrances and some amazing dupes that are so affordable and I'm going to be sharing with you a special perfume hack that I use to make my perfume last all day. Before we get into the perfumes, I am going to be unboxing a vintage Chanel necklace and we're going to be styling this outfit together. If you're not interested in this section, then just make sure you check out the timestamps in the description box and you can just fast forward to the perfume section. But this is really exciting. Um, so I got myself a vintage Chanel necklace for my birthday. My 31st birthday is coming up in June, kind of towards the end of June. And I saw this on Fashion File. You guys already know that I love Fashion File because they have an authenticity money back guarantee. So any luxury good that's purchased from there has a lifetime warranty. Um, and you know, I unsubscribed from their emails. I, it feels like a hundred times they will not remove me from their email list. And this is a problem because they know the kind of consumer I am and they keep sending me these emails and when I'm trying to delete them, somehow I just open them and I just like see this these beautiful things that they have for sale on there. So first I'm gonna show you guys what the packaging looks like and then I'll tell you a little backstory of how I discovered this necklace. So this item that I got does come with a box which I was really lucky about. The box is not 100% perfect. It does have like a little sticky right here. That's just where like there was like a tag. It's got the little label right here. And this is my very first Chanel necklace. I do have some earrings um, that I've gotten over the years. I know I, I got a pair for my dental school graduation, um, but this is my first necklace. So I've never received it this way. Inside the box, it comes with this really nice um, jewelry little pouch. It's not made out of a velvet material. I'm not sure exactly what fabric material it's made out of, but it's very soft and it's to protect the jewelry from tarnishing and scratching and dust. So look how cute this is. It flaps open. Woo. So many flaps. And there is our baby. The necklace is made out of marble and it has this gold brass hardware around here. It did come with a certificate of authenticity. I keep this always just in case. I love how the necklace is physically clipped into this little carrying case. So even if I were to turn it upside down, this thing is not falling anywhere. Whoops, she's not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and try this one on and we're gonna style this little beauty. So I had originally seen this necklace on Fashion File and it was over $1,000. I believe it was listed originally at 1,200, not including tax, of course. And I thought, okay, I love that. I love the choker look, the statement necklace. Who doesn't love Chanel? But I said, there's no way, I don't really want to, I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars right now on a necklace. Like, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Me to me. <laughs> but then it turns out that they had the same exact necklace. This one wasn't quite as in mint, mint condition. There are some parts of the hardware that maybe are a little bit scratched or a little bit tarnished, but it was significantly less expensive. And when I saw that, I said, okay, fine. I have to do it for my 31st birthday. Last year, right before my birthday, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and I was so depressed. I feel like my entire 20s, I had thought for my 30th birthday, we're going all out. You know, they say 21st birthday is important, 25 and then 30. And then after that, you pretty much just celebrate every single decade. So I was wanting to, or initially wanting to throw myself a 30th birthday party or at least, you know, have an outing, make an outing out of it with my friends. And my mom was diagnosed in May. And as a matter of fact, two weeks before my birthday, she had her double mastectomy and I was just, I feel like I get like emotional just thinking about how hard it was at that time. I was devastated. I was beside myself. 
I was so stressed out from this job that I had that was very high performance. I was stressed out with everything to do with the wedding and then I was stressed out about this definitely took that place of stress. I didn't want to lose my mom. I was afraid of losing her. And I was so depressed. On my actual birthday, I had made no plans. I said, I'm not going to throw a party. I don't want to do anything. I just want to stay home. And my husband actually, um, he told me he was going to work that day. It was a Friday. He told me he was going to work that day. And he surprised me by taking the day off of work and coming home. And he came in through the front door. So I literally thought someone was trying to break in. <laughs> I like jumped up. It was, it was like a whole thing. I feel myself getting pink. But anyway, um, I didn't do anything at all for my 30th birthday. And uh, my best friend also showed up that day with the cake. She was such a sweetheart. Um, she also lost her father right before her 30th birthday. And we just, we had a rough year. Um, so anyway, for this year, I said, this is my 30th birthday plus one. Finally, I get to feel 30, flirty, and thriving. And I'm getting myself this Chanel necklace. So again, not sponsored, but definitely check out Fashion File. I just love them. I, I love finding beautiful, pre-loved, well taken care of items that are certified authentic and that they don't make anymore. They don't make those vintage pieces anymore. And this is something, these certain designer goods and certain designer brands for sure, Chanel, they hold their value really well. And I know that in 10 years or 20 years or whatever, like even when my daughter's an adult, she can literally still wear this necklace. I can hand this down to her. It'll be in, you know, well taken care of in pristine condition and this is something that's timeless that can be worn for many many years and decades to come so let's go ahead and style this outfit sorry i was not expecting to get emotional like that this video this is supposed to be a fun video about perfume and fashion and all that good stuff so with this outfit i have many ideas of what i want to do for styling this i imagine top knot bun with a strapless dress. What I want to do today is go a little more classy professional. So I am thinking of doing like a white blazer with some beige, I don't know, like a beige jumpsuit or a beige legging underneath. For the earrings, I just wore these little plain baby pearls. I didn't want anything that was gonna be too distracting because this necklace is very much a statement necklace. It says, look at me. So for the earrings, I just kinda wanted it to be a little more downplayed. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you the pieces that I pulled and then we'll put them on. Okay. Guys, I live near a private airport, so there's literally always a damn plane in the background when I'm recording. I'm so sorry. This part of the room is a mess, and so is that one. But over here, we have some of the stuff that I pulled out. Sorry, I, I wasn't expecting to film in the room, so it kind of looks like trash. But uh, this is real life. <laughs> um, okay, so I just pulled out this little white blazer. This, I think, yep, from Forever 21. I have these little beige-colored um, leggings. I think I got these from Boohoo. These are, oh yeah, they're from Boohoo. They're ancient. These are uh, like 10 years old, but I never get rid of stuff because I'm kind of a clothing hoarder. So, and just for a time like this, right? I knew I was going to need them again. And then I have this little bodysuit from Forever 21. It's inside out right now. Clearly, you can see the tag right there. This might have been in the intimate section. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm planning on doing bodysuit and then the little leggings. And then we got the blazer on top to tie in the white look from the marble. And then I'm thinking some beige heels. All right, so these are the leggings with the bodysuit over it. Uh, it looks a little funky right now, but let's see if the white blazer will tie everything together. Here. Okay, this is what it's looking like right now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of it. The main thing that's bothering me is the tonal difference between the bodysuit and the leggings. I think I'm gonna switch to a pair of jeans and the baby blue is really gonna offset everything. Ideally, if we had one big jumpsuit, I think I would like that a little bit more, but because we don't, I'm gonna switch to jeans, BRB. All right, so already I'm liking the outfit so much more with the white jeans. They have kind of a wide leg, which I will show you in a minute. And I'm just gonna be pairing them with some plain beige pumps. These are my Louboutins and I'm just choosing these honestly because I have not worn them outside yet and I don't want to get my carpet dirty. Don't judge. 
but any truly any pump any beige pump will do all right here is the outfit so the peach from the makeup ties in with the peach from the bodysuit, which, by the way, if you like this makeup look, I do have it up on my channel. It's a super simple, peachy summer makeup look, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in a little short tutorial. The white pulls from the marble of the necklace and matches with the pants. Also, too, the metal of the necklace is kind of more of like a rose goldy tone so it also matches with the color scheme of the bodysuit and the shoes and the jeans are wide leg jeans which i just love these types of jeans this cut of jean is so in right now and honestly when i got these jeans i had them hemmed because they were really long and now i'm wishing that i had left them a little bit longer i almost want them to go fall a little further on the heel so that when I bend my leg, the heel is still covered up. But anyway, yeah. So here's the outfit. I feel like this is like executive CEO. Wear this from the office to a dinner date. Boom. Again, don't mind my mess. Like, that's real life. <laughs> Everything you see on Insta, curated. If somebody has the secret sauce to keeping your house always looking like that, like every square inch of your house, please let me know. It's different for like the downstairs or areas of your room that you don't use every day. But when, when it's a high traffic, high volume room, like your bedroom, how do you guys not keep your clothes? Like, how does this not happen? I don't know. Okay, let's talk about the perfumes. Moving on to the perfumes, I'm going to be talking about four of my favorite scents. All of these scents are in the fruity citrus family. They have just a very mild hint of sweetness, but they're not overpoweringly sweet. So when you think of something like that perfume, I believe it's called like pink sugar, it's not overpoweringly sweet like that. This is more of a floral, citrusy sweet. So not too floral. The citrus adds like a little bit of that, like sharpness. I honestly don't know how people go on describing perfumes. <laughs> they can think of endless gorgeous words, you know, as descriptive factors. But these perfume favorites that I have are pretty popular. So if you've smelled one of them and enjoy it, you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna like some of the other ones that I mentioned in this video. They're all in the same perfume family. So the first one is Miss Dior. This is Blooming Bouquet, but I also love Miss Dior Cherry. And this is, like I said, floral. Mm, it just smells so clean. Now, the reason that I started with Miss Dior is because I have a perfume hack. And there's a little bit of a backstory to this. I have found pretty much an exact dupe of Miss Dior in roll-on form that's only $14. So let's go back. When I was in high school and college, I used to love shopping in downtown LA, Santee Alley, we called them the Callejones. We would go, you go through the alleys, and there's a bunch of little mom and pop boutique shops. At that time, none of them had an Instagram or a website. That's actually where Miss Lola or Lola Shootique started. They had their little pop-up shop in the alley. So we would go there and shop often, and um, my we were having some like drama happening in my family, like just a bunch of bad luck was going on at that time. This must have been around 2014 or 2015. So my Thea and I were in downtown LA and we said, um, let's buy some burning sage. So my Thea and I were in downtown LA. We passed by a store that sold burning sage. And for those of you who don't know, they say that burning sage is really good for, um, I believe like spiritual cleansing or like, getting rid of any bad juju. You want to burn some sage in your home and it's hopefully to kind of lift up any negative stuff that's been um, ailing you. So we went into the store. I think the owners were Bengali, but they may have been Indian. I'm not really sure. It was so long ago. Anyway, we go in to buy the sage and they had so many gorgeous oils. And of course, right at the checkout aisle, they had these tiny little 
perfume bottles. This is 100% oil, so it's very, very strongly scented. And they were, they had the names of some of the most famous perfumes that I loved. I still have the original bottle. You can see this one says Miss Dior. And it was just hanging out right there at the checkout line. So of course you're tempted to buy. At the time I think they were $9 each and if you bought three, they went down to $6 each. So I was like, okay, 15 bucks for some little oil perfumes. I thought to myself, I'm just gonna grab a few and it'd be great to have one in my car, one in my purse, you know, you never know when you're like leaving the gym and let's say you have an errand to run, you just wanna do like a little quick refresher. So I bought these pretty much just on a whim, just to have in my car and as a spare if I were to need perfume. Well, these scents ended up being almost one-to-one -one replicas to the nose, you really can't tell the difference unless you're probably working in a perfume store or you are the actual creator of the fragrance. You would not be able to tell the difference between this roll on oil and the actual Miss Dior perfume. So what I would do is I would layer my perfume. Now perfumes come in two different types. There's Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette. And Eau de Parfum has more oils in it. It's gonna be a more concentrated, fragrance, longer lasting. Eau de Toilette, unfortunately, even though they smell so good, they don't last all day. That bugs me, right? Like, <laughs> these perfumes are expensive for a perfume. Back in the day, they were like $150 for a bottle, so nowadays I'm sure they're probably like 200 to 200 plus for a bottle. So if I am spraying a $200 bottle of perfume or a $300 bottle of perfume, I want it to last all day. Like that's my expectation. I don't want to spray the perfume and it fades in five minutes. It's like such a waste and you don't get to enjoy it. So what I would do is I would layer the Miss Dior. I would put it just on my wrists and behind my ears and then I would spray the Miss Dior fragrance all day. Let me tell you, the fragrance, it really brought out those notes in the fragrance, made it smell so much better, made it last all day, and I was getting compliments left and right. Even the times that I would not put the Miss Dior on top and I was just using the little Rolly, I would get so many compliments. As a matter of fact, when my husband and I were just friends, we were, we were friends and classmates in dental school, I remember I put this on and like during a lunch break or something and the wind blew and he literally was like, oh my God, what is that smell? It smells so good. And I was like, oh, oh, that smell? That's me. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> anyway, it smells really freaking good. So COVID happened and unfortunately so many stores closed down. I'm pretty sure that the store where I originally bought this oil shut down. I looked for it on Google Maps, you know, using that feature where you pretty much like walk the streets. I couldn't find it. So I thought, dang, well maybe they had a website. Maybe I found out I could find it online. So I typed in the description on Google and lo and behold, I found an entire dedicated website that makes these oil perfumes. It is called Oil Perfumery oilperfumery.com. I just want to let you guys know, this is not a sponsored video. I just love this so much. This is honestly such a beauty hack for me and all of my friends. So I found it, I was super excited, and I ordered myself four different fragrances from their line, and I just wanted to test it out. I don't want to order too many because if they didn't smell that good, um, or they didn't smell like the original one, which this was really, I, I kind of had my hopes up. I wanted to find something that was going to be identical to this. If it wasn't going to be as good as this, I wasn't going to invest any more money into it. They were having a Mother's Day sale when I placed the order, so thankfully I was able to get everything. I think they were like $9 each, um, originally down from $14. So okay, yeah, they are a little more expensive than the ones I had discovered all those years ago, but it's still, look, I literally used it for years and I still have oil in this bottle. So a little really goes a long way with this. $14 literally will last you an entire year or two years even. On the website, they have some original scents and then they also have some scents that are dupes of some of the most popular fragrances. So for example, this one says Miss Dior Sherry, our impression of Christian Dior. I thought that was a really beautiful way to put it, our impression, so clearly they're letting you know that it is a dupe, but it is inspired by, you know, said fragrance. 
This smells exactly like the original one that I had purchased in downtown LA. It smells so damn good. And I used it when I went to work the other day. I put it on. Literally, I could smell it even through my mask all day. So I highly recommend this. Again, like I said, the perfume pack, put it on, layer it on underneath the original fragrance and you get the best of both worlds. Another thing I wanted to mention is I had ordered a rose one, you know, from the original store. And at that time I worked as a server and on the weekends. I had graduated from college and I was a dental assistant and I was applying to dental school and I was also working as a server on the weekend that first year to make some extra money and I would put on the Roly perfume. People would literally stop me. All of the women would stop me and say, oh my god, what are you wearing? It smells so good. And I'll say, I'm sorry. It's like, I don't know. It doesn't have a name. It's just called Rose. So trust me on this. Even if you just buy one for yourself, you have to buy one and try it at this price point. Like you have nothing to lose. And trust me, once you find your scent, you're going to be so grateful that you did. Okay. So Miss Dior, love this perfume, highly recommend it. The next one that I wanna talk about is Jo Malone. Now, there are two fragrances of Jo Malone that I absolutely adore. I'm just gonna mention one right now, and that is the Nectarine and Honey Blossom Cologne. I love this fragrance. It's also very light and fruity. You can smell that nectarine. You can smell the honey blossom. It's just such a fresh, clean fragrance. This little bottle, again, this was like 150 plus tax like years ago. So I am sure the prices have gone up since everything's gone up with inflation these days. But this one I find that I would really have to drench myself in it for it to last a long time. Some situations I would find that it went away right away. What I noticed is if I spray this on my clothes, and on my hair, then I smell it for much longer versus if I just spray it on my neck or my hands or my wrists, then the smell, the fragrance will fade throughout the day. Oil Perfum Perfumery does have their interpretation of one. So I just ordered one. This one is the Nectarine Blossom and Honey. So our impression of Jo Malone London. Now I just wanna say, this one is very similar, but it's not a one-to-one -one replica of the fragrance. So, smell this one first. Okay, so when I smell the gel alone, this one has a little more of the honey. It's a little bit sweeter. This replica of the fragrance very, very close, but I can smell that it has a little more citrus in it. So it's a little bit of a sharper smell and less of a sweet, soft smell. Nevertheless, I did layer this underneath my perfume the other day. And again, I got in the car and my husband was like, oh my God, you smell so good. I said, secrets, thank you. Just kidding. <laughs> it was this combination. It smells really, really good. I highly recommend it. If you like a clean, fresh fragrance, you are absolutely gonna love this perfume. Now, I did wanna mention that there's another perfume um, that smells almost identical to this one, and that is a Kim Kardashian perfume, KKW. I'm not sure if KKW Fragrances is still running. I know that she was doing some updates, I think, to the website. I'm also not sure if some of her perfumes are only like limited edition. I really hope she brings them back though because I've been a fan of so many of the scents and her perfumes generally last a really long time. So she was having a sale at the time, I believe it was during Valentine's Day and it was you, you it was a bundle price. You purchase all of the fragrances of this model or of this series. So this was the Nude series and this one is called Nude Silk. And of course, it sucks because it's a teeny weeny baby bottle, but it just smells so good. And when I smelled it, I immediately said, oh my God, that smells just like Jo Malone. She knew what she was doing with that one. Yeah. There's maybe a 5% difference in the fragrance from this one and this one. And this one, the bottle is, like I said, over 150. This one, I think it was $25. So
So there are definitely options if you want to get this scent for less. You can try this cute little dupe and if you really love it then you can go ahead and purchase the fragrance or if the KKW, um, again this is Nude Silk, this one smells so good. What I love about this is that look how tiny it is. But the pro is that it's perfect for travel size versus this one's so much bigger. And I think this one only has... Yeah, it's only one fluid ounce. So I can have this in my carry-on bag at the airport and I don't have to worry that they're gonna take it away at TSA. This is a great travel size if you want to smell delicious but don't wanna travel with the full size of your perfume. Okay, so on the topic of KKW fragrance, another one of her fragrances which I absolutely love is her Crystal Gardenia. This is the Citrus Gardenia. Yes, Crystal Gardenia Citrus. And you know, she did an excellent job with the packaging of the product. I do love that it comes in a beautiful like crystal perfume container. You can just like leave it out on your vanity. It looks gorgeous. I actually get little candle tea light holders and I have it propped in there so it stands up. Um, that way I have all of my little one, you know, all of them standing up in the area and it's easy for me to just grab it and spray it in the morning and then put it back. I don't particularly like it lying down. I feel like it takes up too much space. But nevertheless, the packaging is gorgeous. Mm, and I can definitely smell the citrus in this. This is citrus with floral, not so much sweet. This scent is also very concentrated, lasts me all day, and I always, always get compliments with this perfume. So again, if you are a fan of the Miss Dior or a fan of the Jo Malone, Nectarine and Honey Blossom, you would really enjoy this scent. It's delicious, and I think the large bottle is $60, which I kind of appreciated. I felt like she kept her perfume price points very attainable for everyone, and it's not too inexpensive, but it's also not too expensive. Whereas a perfume like this, this is more of like a luxury perfume, and I also have another one, Parfume de Marly. It's amazing. That was $300 for the bottle. Um, before tax. That's ridiculously expensive. And I got that for Christmas, you know, like a special occasion like that. But I still think that, that was, that's insanely expensive. And um, like 60 to like $130 price point for a bottle, I feel like is reasonable. And you don't feel like you're going to be breaking the bank. The very last scent I wanted to mention just for thoroughness is Chance by Chanel. Ah, oh, this one, it smells so fresh. Mm, everybody knows what Chance by Chanel smells like. This is the pink one. I am very eager to try the green one and the marigold colored one, but um, this was the pink one. I think this was given to me as well as a gift. Uh, I selected it, of course, but it was a gift, I think, for, for Christmas one year. I've had this bottle for years and like I just cycle between my perfumes, so they literally last me all day. I did not get a dupe replica of Chance by Chanel. I'm sure they have it on there, but honestly, this fragrance is really strong. I didn't feel like I needed any more. Any more layered under this might be too potent, too powerful. This one is, like I said, concentrated enough to not need to be layered. So once again, all of these perfumes are like in the citrusy family. I know I keep saying, mm, so fresh, so clean, but that's because that's literally the impression that you get when you open up the bottle and smell the scents. They just smell so wonderful, fresh, clean, <laughs> not too sweet, not too floral. It's just a beautiful feminine scent that is perfect for any occasion. You can wear it daytime, you can wear it nighttime. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do is go over a couple of the other fragrance scents that I ordered from Oil Perfumery. I did get their interpretation of Flower Bomb from Victor and Rolf. I do have this perfume as well, and I do really enjoy that scent. Let's smell this one. Hmm. Pretty close. This is also my first time smelling it. I would say this is about 80% similar, not 100%. It definitely doesn't smell as good as the 
Victor and Rolf flower bomb, but it's definitely a close second. And this perfume I probably will just keep in my car. So if ever I'm feeling I'm feeling not so fresh, I can just dab a little bit on. Or this is great for like a travel bag or in your cosmetics case or what have you. Okay, the next one I got was our impression of Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia. I honestly don't have this perfume, so I don't know what to compare it to, but I do love Gardenia scent, and I mean, who doesn't love Gucci? So I ordered this one, and I thought, okay, if I like it, again, this will be a perfect one to just keep stashed in my purse at all times. Hmm. I'm not picking up too much of the Gardenia. It is very floral. And it smells good. It smells clean, not too strong, not too sweet. Super floral, but um, not as much gardenia in the traditional sense of what you feel like gardenia would smell like. So, but once again, just delicious. I'm so happy that I found oil perfumery. Um, I'm gonna be probably a customer for life if they always have, <laughs> they stay open, hopefully. Um, and I know that there are a couple other um, replica oils that I've been wanting to get and add to my collection so that I can layer them under my favorite fragrances. Okay guys, well thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I likely will be coming back with a part two of a different set of fragrances that um, have a different like overall theme. Like this one was citrusy. Uh, we'll do another set for sweet and for nighttime. Um, I do have quite a few favorite fragrances. I don't wanna bore you by making the video too long. But like I mentioned, thanks again so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your support of my channel. Please like and subscribe this video and please follow me on Instagram. I would really, really appreciate it. And stay tuned for another video next week. I have new videos every week. Take care.